Well, it's hard to think, but below our feet is the tunnel, the new tunnel constructed to take the Manchester Button Lumber Road Canal from the River Row on underneath this busy inner relief road to emerge beneath that railway vine up there. As you can see, John, it looks like one big building site at back of me, but originally the Manchester Button Lumber Road Canal went through this site. As you can see over there, it's a railway bridge we filmed earlier, and beyond that, the new inner relief road. The canal literally came up here make it through Stormwick there and then it went under what's called East Stars and Lane Bridge as you can see that's, that's the intention as you can see from here the River Airwell and that's the canal going under the new New Relief Road underneath the viaduct you'll have some new locks East Stars and Lane and then the canal goes up towards Ulthia Road but in a few short months it should look like But at the moment, it looks like that! The building site! This is a footbridge that, as you can see over there, that was East Stars of Lane Canal Bridge. Can you see the concrete deck? Yeah. You can see all the lovely masonry there. But what happened is, the canal came from over there, where well, can you see the, the gap where the railway is? It came along here, underneath this bridge, and here you can just make out lock three. And that curve is where the lock gates used to be. You can make out the curve. And this is lock three. And from here, you get some superb views of the original sill. So what you're talking here is quite a big lock. Um, and that's how high the boat had to travel to get onto the next section. We've just come far up the Manchester Wollum Bay Canal. We've gone through Lock 3, we've gone through the short sulphur number one tunnel, and as you can see there's a black pipe and the canal sort of disappears underneath the railway by sulphur number two tunnel. And the basin over there has been built on, but that building hopefully will be demolished to resurrect the canal. And then you add some more locks on the Oldfield Road. That way, Bolton and Bury. That way, Manchester. And we're going that way. Hiya John, we're back on stage two of our exploration of the Manchester Multon Bay Canal in Salford. In this forest, if you want to call it that, you might make out you've got a bit of a stone coke in there and you've got a wrought iron sort of bridge. What this was, was Salford number two tunnel. Uh, last time we followed the canal up from Lock 3, we went through the short Salford number one tunnel and this is Salford number two tunnel where the canal came under the main railway line. You can just make out the girder and down there quite a bit, obviously you would have had the water in the canal and the boats could have floated under there. This big brick edifice here is actually built on what was a canal turning basin. So originally you would have come out of Salford number 2 tunnel, you would have turned your boat around facing this way and you would have entered lock 4 which were a staircase pair, locks 4 and 5 taking you under Oldfield Road. So what we're going to do now, cross the road and go that way. Right, we're just crossing over the road and I'm going to show you a few attractions in sunny Salford. Right John, this derelict building behind me is built on what was a turning basin. So you can imagine you're floated up, you come under the railway line, you've gone into this big turning basin, you've turned your boat around like that, and you've entered the first lock of a staircase per lock 4. So you've gone into lock 4, you've shut your lock gates, You've let your water in, you're flowing into lock 5 and then you go straight under. And you can't really make out, but between that stone there and that stone there, that's the original canal bridge. So even though you can't tell and even though it's below our feet, you've still got a bridge here which is on the field and my, my, my feeling is all the stone of the locks will still be completely intact. So when it comes to restore this section, you probably find some perfect locks ready to be reused. Right John, oh, we're, we're other side of Oldfield Road now. If you look here, you've got like this purple engineering brick and you'll notice suddenly you've got this red brick. But when you look more carefully you can see originally there was a gate post here, stone, stone. You can even see where the bricks used to curve in and again on the other side there's your coping stones and the other side of the wall. What this was originally when the canal was open 
you could have gone through here to get onto the canal towpath. Like there were no towpath on that side, so a bit of a struggle. So what you had to do, horses etc, you know like barges, uh, would have had to come through this gate post, cross over and join the canal uh, above number two tunnel. So this was the entrance to the towpath on Oldfield Road Canal Wharf. Very elderly photograph now, but what that shows is, is Canal Workers Cottages uh, near Stanley Street. Uh, to put it in proximity, the canal was sort of the other side of PR Jackson's works. So the people who, who worked, you know, for the canal company, um, had their own places to live. Uh, I quite like the sort of bell roof of the effect. Uh, Look really sort of countryish, but obviously you've got all the industry around there now, and you know a nice trough for the horses to drink drink water from and all the cobble roads. <clears throat> Quite a nice shot. Again it's a very very old shot. Uh, I've not got a date for it but what this was was a Sunday school outing. Here is somewhere in Pendleton uh, so it's probably not far from Broughton Road Canal Bridge. If you look closely what you've got there obviously the box boat and you've got a horse. So what was going to happen, you've got all these Sunday school kids on the boat. You know, I'm surprised it's not some kid, you know, <laughs> there's that many of them. Um, I believe what they did uh, for these Sunday school outings, obviously these boats, these box boats were used for carrying coal in containers. And specifically for that outing, what they would have done, they would have taken all the containers out. So it was like an empty hold. And I think they used to line it with cloth, because uh, obviously, you know, these kids are in the best attire. And if they went into a, like a, a really dirty canal boat, they're going to get filthy, aren't they? So I believe what they did is like line it in like white cloth just to keep them clean. And then take them out, I think, as far as like Margaret Barlow's tea gardens, which was near Ringley Village. And then obviously once they've been out, then they'll bring them all the way back to Pendleton. But it's just looking at people's faces, you know, quite haunting really. You know, you've got like youngsters, kids. Obviously there's a, a young gentleman on the horse there. And you can always make out a street sign, I was trying to read it before, but it's just not quite good enough. It's one of them photographs, but you, what you can make out, obviously, edge of towpath and lovely towpath. You know, any idea towpath. roughly when it was I'd, I'd say probably about 1905. I'd say probably just after 1900. So most of those would be dead now, if not I'd, all of them. I'd say every single person on there would be dead. Uh, obviously the horse would be long gone in the boat. It's probably like in a bit of filled in canal somewhere. Uh, at some point we will go towards me a port boat museum and look at the only surviving box boat. <laughs>